If you check out the Manx Commander page on StarcraftCoop.com, you'll find this. It is a table that provides you with a ton of probability data for Manx's Earth players. Now, if you were wondering how this data was generated, well, you are not going to be wondering for very long, because in this video, I'll talk about how the data was obtained. Now, I think a good place to start is to just quickly explain how an Earth player works. When you click an area for the Earth player to target, it randomly selects a point to target within a circle of radius 7.5 of the point that you have clicked. This corresponds to the location the shell will hit, and this shell will deal 100 damage in a circle of radius 3 of the shell strike. For a single Earth player, we only have one circle, so it's not really an interesting case. So we'll start with two Earth players instead. There's a mathematical equation that can give you the distribution of distances between the two Earth player shots. I've shown the equation over here, and it's called the disk line picking equation. And while it does look a little bit intimidating, it's not very difficult to solve because R is constant. It's the Earth player AOE size. You'll see that after I solve this equation, I get pretty much the same answer as I got from my simulation data. And in fact, this was very helpful when I was coding this because it helped me validate whether my calculations were correct. However, we don't only want to do this for two Earth players. We want to do it from all the way from 1 to 20 Earth players. And as a matter of fact, this problem becomes infinitely more complicated when you add even a single Earth player to the disk line picking equation. And in fact, it becomes so complicated that there is no analytic solution that exists. There is no equation that you can solve to give you a straight up answer. And this is where a computer simulation comes in. I wrote some Python code to actually perform these calculations. And while I won't go into detail as to what I actually coded, I want to talk about how I calculated the data. So we'll take the data in the table step by step. The first part is determining if an overlap exists. And this one is quite simple. We simply take a look at the centers of circles, and if the centers are less than two radii away from each other, we can count that as an overlap. So that's what the chance of overlap is. In a single salvo of Earth players, what is the chance you'll have at least one overlap? The expected overlaps counts the total number of overlaps you should expect in a single salvo. Likewise, for the second table that deals with a point target, we simply set the point target to be the center of the bombardment, and we see how many Earth player bombardment circles overlap with that target, again, by considering the distances between the circles. And now we get to the tricky part, and that is the total area covered by the overlapping circles. This is the most computationally expensive part, and to put it into perspective, the overlap probability calculations using the circle centers took maybe about a few minutes to do for 2 million simulations. Now, 2 million simulations here is 100,000 simulations for each Earth Splitter count, and each simulation corresponds to one Earth Splitter salvo. Now, the total overlapping area calculations, that took around a few days to complete the 2 million simulations for the same set. One other thing to note is that the total area that can be covered is slightly larger than the total random area a bombardment can land in. And this is because a shell can strike near the edge of that possible area circle and cover a small area outside of it. To get the total overlap area, we are going to split this shape into a very particular way which will allow us to solve a simple geometry problem. First, we are going to connect the circular arcs as follows. Now this is the most computationally expensive part, as you have to figure out which circles should be disregarded, which ones, for example, are outside the area of interest, and if there are any holes in the middle of this overlap. So there are a few things that can make this a lot more complicated than I'm showing over here. For this video, we'll do a very simple example which I've shown. As you can see, this splits the problem into two parts, the sum of the areas of the circular arcs and the area of the polygon in the middle. The sum of the areas of the circular arcs is a simple calculation. It's basically a fraction of pi r squared, depending on the angle of the arc. The area of the polygon is slightly more complicated, but not that much. We simply split the polygon into a bunch of triangles and calculate the area of each triangle individually. Thus, we now have the total area of the overlapping circles. Now that we have the area that is covered by these circles, we now have all the information we need to calculate the percentages as required. 
And that is how I calculated all of Manx's Earth player data. I hope you found this video interesting, and I hope it gives you guys an insight as to how much analysis can go into a seemingly simple mechanic.